Okay, we got to talk hedge funds for a second. Or, to be more specific, what they are, what they do, and what most people get wrong about them. And there's a lot people get wrong. Some of it, because there's just a lot of bad info out there, and some of it, because the term hedge fund has been diluted so much over the years that it has lost most of its meaning to the point where people will use it to describe all sorts of alternative investment strategies that have nothing to do with what a hedge fund actually does. And I mean, zip zero on the diddly squat meter. Which is why it's important to first define what a hedge fund is so we are all on the same page. See, in its most basic form, a hedge fund is nothing more than a private investment partnership that aims to generate positive returns across all economic cycles, while at the same time trying to protect its capital from market risk. Or, to put it more simply, Hedge funds want to make money for the investors in both good and bad markets, regardless if prices are going up or down. That's it. That's the primary goal of a hedge fund. Simple and easy, at least in theory. Not so much in practice, especially over long periods of time. Which brings us to our second question. What do hedge funds actually do? Well. The thing that makes a hedge fund a hedge fund is the hedge, or the process of reducing the risk of financial losses. And while there are different ways of doing this, the most popular approach is to buy or go long shares of a company that's expected to increase in value, while at the same time selling or shorting borrowed shares of a company that's expected to decrease in value. This strategy, called long-short equity, is the oldest hedge fund strategy and has been around since the 1950s. And so the term hedge fund actually comes from the investment strategy itself. Now, obviously markets have changed a lot in the last 60 years. And so have hedge funds and their investment strategies. Besides the long short equity strategy, there are basically four key hedge fund strategies. Credit, event driven, relative value, and macro. Credit strategies involve debt securities and focus on the arbitrage of risk, including default risk, credit spread risk, and liquidity risk. Event-driven strategies can involve both debt and equity and focus on changes that happen before or after corporate events, such as mergers, acquisitions, spin-offs, bankruptcies, or a change in management. Relative value strategies are another form of arbitrage that focus on mispricings between two correlated securities. Macro strategies are unique in that they involve all major markets and liquid asset classes, such as equities, debt, currencies, and commodities to navigate the geopolitical and economic events around the world <laughs> and the market swings that follow them. Um, there are also a few funds that have set up so-called side pockets to invest not just in public markets, but also private markets, such as venture capital, real estate, and some of the more esoteric corners of finance, such as film financing, litigation financing, royalty fees, and so on. Or, 
in the case of multi-strategy funds, they are set up to combine different hedge fund strategies into one fund. But overall, the key point that ties all these different hedge funds together and makes a hedge fund a hedge fund is that they all hedge to different degrees against market risk. Or at least they used to. Today, when people use the term hedge fund, they are in most cases not even referring to any particular investment strategy anymore, but a compensation structure, aka the famous 2N20. This fee structure goes back to the early days of hedge funds, when it was common for a hedge fund to charge a management fee and a performance fee. The management fee aims to cover the cost of running the fund and is charged on the assets under management, or AUM. The performance fee, on the other hand, is charged on the fund's annual profits above a certain level of return, or hurdle rate, to incentivize the fund manager to focus on maximizing performance rather than assets under management for the sake of running a large fund. This dual fee structure is generally referred to as 2 and 20 since the industry standard used to be a 2% management fee and a 20% performance fee. And while the 2 and 20 is what generally captures most media attention, there are other aspects that set hedge funds apart from other investment funds. For example, most hedge funds are subject to regulation that prevents them from marketing to the general public, which is why they tend to be structured as private partnerships that raise money from institutional investors and high net worth individuals. This is also one of the reasons why hedge funds seem so secretive to the general public. Because in most cases, it just doesn't make much sense for a hedge fund to maintain a public profile above and beyond what's required by regulators and policymakers. And so one way to learn more about hedge funds, their strategies, their portfolio positions, or their leverage, is to dive into their regulatory filings, which is always a valuable and free resource that every investor should utilize. And while we're on the subject of leverage, it's important to stress the risks of using margin loans, as it not only amplifies your potential profits, but also your potential losses, to the point where it can result in the liquidation of the entire fund to meet a margin call. And that's not the only risk. For example, short selling involves risks that can result in massive losses that long investors do not face. The reason is that when you buy shares in a company and the share price goes to zero, your loss is limited to whatever amount you invested. While your potential profit, at least in theory, is unlimited. So worst case scenario, you lose your entire investment, but you can't lose more than what you put in if you're not using any margin loans. But in the case of short selling, this dynamic works in reverse. As the price of the shares goes up, your losses increase. And if for whatever reason, the share price starts to spike, well, your losses will go supersonic. This financial nightmare is called a short squeeze and is something you want to avoid if you can. Basically, what happens is that as the price starts to increase, the short seller is forced to add more collateral or cover the short position altogether by buying back the borrowed shares, which in turn sends the stock price up even higher. This can be especially devastating for funds that run concentrated portfolios because 
as the position goes against you, it becomes a bigger position in the portfolio compared to, say, a losing long position, which actually becomes a smaller position within the portfolio. Then there's also the risk that as the portfolio grows in size and value, entering and exiting investments can start to become a challenge, especially in less liquid and developed markets. To address this, hedge funds tend to ask investors to lock up their capital for a set period of time that can range from a few months to several years. What this means is that investors will not be able to take their money out of the fund until their lockup period expires, which is meant to help the fund unwind positions in a manner that minimizes any potential impact that could adversely affect the other investors in the fund. Now, all this is pretty interesting stuff and at first glance can seem complex or confusing. But I really hope I got to answer your question and clear up some of the confusion surrounding hedge funds. Or who knows, maybe you're even more confused now. In which case, oops. But yeah, that's it. That's more or less the gist of what hedge funds are all about. Just remember, not every investment fund that's called a hedge fund these days will actually be a hedge fund. <laughs>